This is a painting by the incredibly prolific and extremely influential 19th century artist Gustave Doré, who lived from 1832 to 1883. And this painting is entitled The Triumph of Christianity Over Paganism, and it's from about 1868. And we can see, ostensibly, this is a celebration of Christianity driving out the gods and goddesses and figures of the other cultures around the world, ancient Greece, ancient Egypt, ancient Mesopotamia, even figures from the Norse myths and the Americas, apparently, maybe some Maya and Inca figures over here. And it's very colorful. There's a contrast of the brilliant light around Jesus and the angels that are just advancing and driving out these ancient gods who are fleeing into the darkness. Some of them have their hands up on their foreheads in anguish. And we can see right in the center is the Greek god Zeus or maybe the Roman god Jupiter with his thunderbolts and beside him his consort Hera or Juno and then there's Saturn or Kronos with his sickle almost being trampled by the chariot of Apollo or Helios. Apollo has dropped the reins, the horses are running wild and Apollo with a halo of light, he's the sun god, is looking up almost beatifically, almost transformed by the vision of Jesus and I'm not sure that Doré is portraying this in a positive light at all. The, the figures of ancient myth, the gods of all the different cultures are much more dynamic looking and much more attractive looking than these kind of faceless, merciless, pitiless angels with their swords who are just advancing with these kind of almost expressionless faces and, and pointing their swords in every direction. But the irony of this entire conflict is that the stories in the Bible, including all the stories from Genesis all the way up through the Revelation, all the stories about Jesus, are based on the same system of celestial metaphor that forms the foundation for all the other ancient myths sacred stories and scriptures of cultures around the world, whether that's ancient India, ancient Egypt, ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Greece. Doré has included figures from ancient Egypt, and you can really see it even better on this engraving, black and white engraving, where there's, we don't get the colors that Doré used in his painting, but we get a lot more of the contrast and the detail we can see what's going on a lot better and zero in on some of these scenes in Doré's picture. But when we zoom up to the Christian symbology, it's almost frightening looking and, and not necessarily attractive at all. I'm not sure that Doré was portraying this as a positive thing, but it's also intriguing to wonder whether Doré is saying, oh, look at Apollo just gets transformed into Christian symbology. Look at how Apollo's halo and or Apollo or Helios driving the sun chariot is looking up almost in recognition and acknowledgement and acceptance. But the ancient myths from cultures around the world are based on celestial metaphor and so are all the stories in the Bible from Genesis all the way through to the book of the Revelation of John, all the stories of the Gospels, those are based on celestial metaphor just as the ancient myths of Greece, Egypt, China, Japan, Africa, Australia, the Americas, the islands of the Pacific, the Norse myths, they're all based on celestial metaphor. They're all based on the same system. And that can be proven. I have shown that with compelling and I would argue conclusive evidence. Thousands of pages, thousands of diagrams, many dozen videos, over a hundred videos. The evidence is overwhelming 
that the ancient myths from around the world are based on the same system, the same system that underlies all the stories of the Bible. And we can see that in this illustration by Doré. He's got Jesus advancing with the cross, Christ in the center advancing with the cross, but there's two main angelic figures. And even in the 1860s, these were assumed to be the angel Gabriel and the archangel Michael. Michael is probably the one who's diving down with his sword to drive away the ancient gods of the other cultures. Michael in the Bible can be shown to be based on the constellation Ophiuchus standing on top of Scorpio with multiple heads. That's the dragon in Revelation that the Archangel Michael is described as driving out and trampling underfoot. And the artwork down through the centuries always shows Michael in the position on top of the multi-headed dragon in the exact position, in fact, of Ophiuchus on top of Scorpio, which is the same two constellations that give us, for instance, Krishna dancing on the head of the Kalianag. I've talked about this in numerous videos. We can see this same pattern over and over. But if you want to really see that the stories of the Bible are based on the stars, if you want conclusive evidence, if you want to be completely versed and fluent in the celestial foundations of the stories of the Bible, then I recommend checking out my courses, the Celestial Bible Tour Part 1 and the Celestial Bible Tour Part 2. Each one is available on demand online. It's not a subscription. You just pay one time. You get the entire course. You can watch it as many times as you want. These courses show beyond any doubt that those figures in the Bible stories and those events in those stories are based on the constellations, the stars, and heavenly cycles, just as the ancient myths and scriptures and sacred stories of cultures around the world from virtually every other culture on every inhabited continent and island of our earth are based on this system of celestial metaphor where the figures and events correspond directly to the stars and heavenly cycles. The terrible irony here, of course, is that this was a catastrophe, and Doré may be even showing it as a catastrophe. This was the loss of antiquity. The rise of literalist Christianity led to the Dark Ages, led directly to the Dark Ages. We can call literalism, at least literalist Christianity, the herald of the Dark Ages. It brought in massive oligarchy where a small number of oligarchs controlled the land and impoverished the vast majority of the population. And the standards of living dropped precipitously. All the civil infrastructure of antiquity was lost and it was basically subsistence, Middle Ages, feudalism, Dark Ages, due directly to literalist Christianity. And in fact, that feudalism, those Dark Ages, we are still struggling against those today. The whole of modern politics, starting with the French Revolution and the rise of modern economics, is an attempt to undo the terrible effects of feudalism in the Dark Ages that descended on Western Europe. And then the counter-revolutionary forces that want to continue the oligarchy of feudalism. You can see history in the light of the arrival of the Dark Ages and literalist Christianity and the struggle against those structures going on still today. And in the painting, these figures of Christianity are driving out 
the ancient gods, but the irony, the terrible tragedy of this is that literalist Christianity is based on the stories of the Bible, unfortunately taking them literally, which is uh, can be shown to be mistaken. I used to take them literally myself, but the evidence is overwhelming that the stories of the Bible are based on celestial metaphor on the same ancient system of celestial metaphor. The stories of the Bible can be shown to be based on the stars and heavenly cycles and the stories of the ancient myths of India and ancient Greece and ancient Egypt and ancient Mesopotamia, the Norse myths, the sacred traditions and texts of the Americas, cultures on every continent, Africa, Australia, the islands of the Pacific are all based on a common system of celestial metaphor, the very same system that underlies the stories collected up into what we call the Bible, from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of the Revelation. So this idea of a conflict between literalist Christianity and the ancient wisdom of the world, it is a true conflict because literalist Christianity did drive out the ancient wisdom, did overthrow the ancient world and usher in the dark ages. It was catastrophe. It was catastrophic. And literalist Christianity continues to go around the world trying to stamp out the ancient wisdom preserved in other cultures. But it's actually a false dichotomy because they're all based on the same system. They can be shown to be based on the same system. I used to take the Bible literally myself, but as I dove into it and found more and more evidence that this ancient celestial system of metaphor was underlying all the ancient myths and ancient wisdom of the world, I realized that the stories in the Bible are not literal. They are based on the same system. They're talking about the same principles and the same truths that all the other ancient myths and sacred stories are trying to point out to us. And they are beautiful and they have profound things to teach us. And when you understand that they're metaphor, you don't lose any of the beauty and truth. What you lose is this terrible concept that only Christianity is right and it needs to go out and overthrow everything else. That's a travesty. That's a Dark Ages mentality. It's a Dark Ages religion. It's a Dark Ages bringing mistake. And this painting, I'm not sure Doré is showing this triumph of Christianity over paganism as a positive thing at all. I think Doré may actually be making some commentary on that, but this painting illustrates that mentality and the evidence that I've shown totally upends this idea that Christianity is right and needs to go around destroying everything else. That's what ushered in the Dark Ages that we're still struggling with to this day.